John Michael Swift again. Welcome back to my finger picking guitar series. Today we're going to start working on James Taylor's Shower the People. This f uh, first lesson is just going to be a simplified version of the song. It's going to give you kind of an outline for how everything goes. Um, and you can definitely play this as a version of the song. It'll get you through it. The next video is going to show you some of the more details that he uses. It'll be like a, uh, like a real performance of the song that uses phrases that he uses mostly from the album, but some, from some live versions too. And then the third lesson is going to go into some more details on improvisations that I do, uh, ways that I kind of explore the finger picking that he does and really try to get into his thinking um, about how he finger picks this song. So that's the plan as of now. If you want to use the lesson navigator below, it'll help you kind of get to the extra lesson pages and find timestamps to get around this lesson. That always really helps a lot if you want to focus on one section or you don't want to have to look for the part you're looking for for so long. Uh, so please use that if... Uh, if you find you need it, and yeah, I think I'm ready to get into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is this finger picking intro. I suppose we should start out with capo on the third fret. We use kind of a D major fingering, but the whole song sounds in the key of F. Just FYI. All right, so you're going to start out with your thumb on the thick E string, your pointer finger on the fourth string, and your middle finger on the third string plucking those three strings open. And this whole basic intro patterns around the idea that you kind of pinch the outside strings and then follow them by playing the inner string with your pointer fingers. So you're kind of going. It's the basic idea. And then you follow that through a series of chords that go like this. It does the open strings, and then it puts the middle and ring fingers on the second frets of the E and G strings. D string is still open. The ring finger lets go, the middle finger slides up to the third fret of the thick E string. And, oh, and I should say, then the ring finger is gonna pluck the B string. Open B. And then you go up to plucking the open B. And then the last chord is you move the thumb up to the the A string, the fifth string. And then I use the pointer finger to kind of make a mini bar across the second fret of the uh, second, third, and fourth strings there to make an A chord. Now essentially what's going on is you've got two lines going on at the same time. The bass is going D, 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 and the supper line is going D, 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 D. So that's what really what you want to bring out. pointer finger on that last note is still going to pluck the D string, but now it's going to be under one of your fingers. So one more time, I'll play it. Three, four. Yeah, so work on that. Try to get it down. Uh, there's a couple other versions of that intro played in other versions of the song, but we'll get to those later. Next thing we're going to do is the verses. The, the verses can kind of be outlined with just, you can just brush chords. That's the easiest way to do it, is just take a D chord, start out with that, and just brush a regular old D chord. After that, brush a regular old A chord. I would recommend fingering the A kind of, sort of like that A7 with the pointer finger kind of smashed in there on the pointer finger on the third string, the ring finger on the second string, and the middle on the fourth string. There's a couple different ways to finger the A's in this song. This is the one I recommend, and you'll see why later. So, starts out going D, brush that, brush the A. Then you're gonna do a walk down sequence. It's gonna be with a B, a B minor chord. You don't really have to hold the whole bar. I just use the pointer finger just on the A string, second fret of the A string. And you just kind of pick the strings one at a time and a wave going that away. Thumb, pointer, middle, ring. I, I 
I love this sequence so much. He, um, he lets this finger go, moves it over to the second fret of the G string, and he lets the pinky go too. So now he kind of has this little D shell going on. Ring finger, third fret, uh, ring finger, fourth fret of the D string. Pointer finger, second fret of the G string. Uh, ring finger is, oh, middle finger is on the second fret of the B string. So that's the middle chord. And then the last chord is an open G. I tend to use my thumb for this, but I would say if you're not so comfortable with that, he tends to use his middle finger over here a lot, and often he'll add the pointer finger there. You know, we'll get to that if we get to it, but usually he uses his middle finger for that chord, and that works pretty well. So that whole sequence sounds a little bit like this. You just do the same kind of upward finger picking for each one. Let there be a pause after the G chord. So that's the main idea of the verse. On the second time you do a cycle of the verses, you're going to do basically the same thing, but you're going to add a chord. So it starts out with the D again. You brush the D. Now you do this A. Now you're going to see why I use this fingering. You take the pointer finger away and you put it over here on the first fret of the fifth string. This is going to make this an A sharp diminished chord. It's the, it's the colorful chord in this song. Everyone's always like, what, what is that chord? This is, the, this is the chord everyone wonders about. It's an A sharp diminished. And then that slides up really easily to this B minor, because the pointer finger can just go whoop right up to the B minor, and it's the same walk down we did before. And so you see, I'm, now I'm using my thumb, and I have my middle finger still here on the third fret of the B string. Both of those are good ways to do it. It depends on which fingering you're most comfortable with. I tend to use the thumb. That's just me. So for each verse, it's going to do that kind of two-part cycle twice. Does D, A, walks down from the B minor to the G, and it does again D, A goes to the A sharp diminished, B minor walk down to the D with the A, and, and then again, it does basically what we just did right there a second time, as it gets to going into the chorus, it's going to change the walk down. Again, it's going to keep walking down. It's going to go from B minor down to the D with the A, the G. It's going to wind up with this D with the F sharp in the bass. Again, I tend to use my thumb, but if you did this before with the middle finger, you can slide that down and use middle finger second fret of the E string, ring finger second E third fret of the B string. So the leading into the chorus part, it goes B minor, D with the A in the bass, G, D with the F sharp in the bass, and then it's going to go from here into the chorus. So that's the part we'll do next. Uh, it starts out with an E minor 7 shape. I usually just finger it with any two convenient fingers, which given we're coming out of this D, this is an easy way to do it. You can kind of leave the pinky where it was. Now, the finger picking that I usually do over everything in the chorus in a simple version is kind of an alternating pattern. You do the thumb, middle, pointer, ring. And depending on what chord, it's going to depend on where you put these fingers. For this chord, thumbs on the E string, pointers on the D string, middle fingers on the G string, and ring fingers on the B string. So second, third, fourth, and then sixth string right there. So you go thumb, middle, pointer, ring, thumb, middle, pointer, ring. So work on that finger picking pattern a bit, because you're going to see we're going to shift it around. Beginning of the chorus does that pattern twice over the E minor. do the same pattern over an A chord, but you're going to shift everything up a string. So now your thumb's on the fifth string and your ring finger's on the first string, middle's on the second, pointer's on the third. So then it repeats those two chords again exactly the same. So E minor, alternating, A. This is kind of the vamp in the chorus. The third time you get around to this 
repeating the E minor and the A. Repeat C minor. When it goes to the A, see I'm going to use this voicing of A because it's going to go through the A sharp diminished again. To a B minor. Very much like it did in the verse. And then the very last thing you're going to do in the chorus to kind of get it back around to itself is you're going to use this F sharp diminished voicing right here. I tend to grab it by putting the middle finger on the second fret of the E string. The pointer finger kind of bars across the first fret on the second, third, and fourth strings. And then the middle finger is second fret of the third string. And you use the same kind of alternating finger picking pattern in your right hand. So that's basically a chorus cycle. I'm going to play the whole thing again because, again, when you do this chorus, it repeats that cycle a few times, and then the ending the second time around, depending on what section you're going to, that's what changes every time. You're going to find in this whole song, every, every section is basically a set of repeated chords, and then the endings change depending on where it's going. So the whole chorus, we'll say this is the second time around, it's E minor, A, show them the way that you feel things are gonna be much better if you only will if you're doing it again what i mean to say tonight is to shower the people you love with love show them to the end of the chorus, it ends uh, right before the last note of that B minor pattern. It's going to go pattern, one, two, three. It's going to go to this C right here, ring finger, third fret of the A string. It's just going to go. Let me show you how to do that. That's the transition out of it. So it starts with the ring finger, third fret of the A string. You basically make a C shape. And you use these three fingers to kind of pluck the three thin strings of the C chord. And unlike I just did a second ago, you want to try to hold this finger there so they ring. So it goes out of the B minor, C, pluck, and then while you're holding this, you try to go 0, 2, 3 on the thick E string. Then you're going to hold your ring finger on the third fret of the thick E. You can use your pinky to play the third fret of the B string and just play the third, uh, second and third strings. So just two strings in context. Let me play that one more time, just up to there. And then to get out of it, you hold the pinky and then you use these two fingers to go second fret of the A string. 3rd fret of the A string, and then wind up to switch to a D chord on that last beat. So your, your middle and your ring fingers are playing that little bass run there. So one more time I'll play that whole transition out very slowly from the B minor. If you only will, C, bass walk, G, just so. Play it one more time, make it totally clear. If you only win. Finish the pattern. One, two, three, C. Walk. And then you're into a verse again, which you, the verses are pretty much all the same. Uh, you can throw variations into them later, but if you're playing a simplified version of it, it's exactly the same as before. So eventually you're going to get around to another chorus. When the chorus comes around again, it is going to have a different transition out into the bridge. So instead of, um, when you get to that B minor chord, you're just going to kind of brush it. Brush it once. So it's going, you know, things are going to be much better if you only will. Just kind of just brush the B minor. Then this kind of funny barring riff he uses here. You're really going to want to have the first finger bar the whole second fret because you're going to go take the middle and ring fingers 
of that B minor chord and kind of let them go as you're plucking the D and the B strings. Play them and then the middle finger fills in there. You kind of just fill that in with a sort of a finger picking arpeggio down. You go dyads and you finger pick those two notes coming down. It's the bass note and then you kind of arpeggio back up with the B minor notes back in. So if I play it in context one more time, where does it start from? It goes, things are gonna be much better if you only will. So one more time to break it down. You play the D and the B strings, let them go. You have those two notes to fill in kind of an arpeggio going down and then you kind of brush up from the bass. You play the thumb, the pointer, and the ring fingers as you replace the fingers of the G, uh, B minor chord. So that's the transition there. See if you can work that into the chorus. From there, you're going into the finger picking bridge. So let's break that down in a little bit more detail. You're coming from this B minor chord. Just the way you kind of played, letting those go, you're gonna go, and then you're gonna let all the fingers go so you're playing the two open strings. Coming from the B minor, you're just kind of plucking with the pointer and the ring fingers. That's all, just going na, na, na. Now, the way I play this in the simplified version is I just do kind of an open arpeggio. He does this as well sometimes in the song, so it's, it's legit. But really, if you ever wondered if all the open strings is ever a chord, this is it. Thumbs on the E string, pointer fingers on the D string, middle fingers on the G string, and I guess the ring finger would play the E string. I often use my pinky, but it's a little odd to do that. So I would use my ring finger on the E string if I were you. So he just goes. That's how he starts. Just one, two, three, four. And then he's gonna follow something very similar to the picking intro he did. He's gonna go, except he's not gonna have the in-between notes at first. He's just gonna go. E and G strings, and then it goes up to the second fret. Middle finger slides up to the third fret, and then you play the open B. So try to get just those first three notes. Next, he's gonna go to sort of an A shape. Except I would just, unlike what I did there, I would just play just these two notes again. I'd play the, uh, I would play just the open A and then the second fret of the B string. So it's still just two notes. If I follow that in from the beginning. Now I'm in this A shape, but I only play two notes. You're gonna see, you're gonna wanna stay with this A chord. It's a funny thing he does here. He kind of has these two extra bass notes. Um, and he usually uses one of his extra fingers to do it. I mean, the particular way James Taylor fingers this is more conducive to this technique than some other things, but I, I find it so difficult to finger things the way he does, which I will show you in detail in the next video in case you choose to do it. What I'm gonna recommend you do is kind of use this bar here if you can, and then use your middle finger to get the second fret of the E string and then the A string. As you then pluck the, when you with those, you're gonna pluck the second fret of the G string and the open E string. It's gonna look like this. You get to the A, and then you do second fret of the E, second fret of the A. Kind of with those extra fingers going along with it. One more time, I'll play this. If you find that confusing, Definitely double check the tab that I have given to go with this lesson because that will make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So definitely try to get that part down in that simplified version and then you're gonna kind of fill it in with some extra finger pick things later. But for now, just play one, two, three. Just so. Now, what, he, what he's gonna do later on is fill it in with a lot of kind of extra little arpeggios. I usually just kind of at least fill in the last chord with just a couple of extra notes just so it doesn't feel totally empty. So you get one, two, three. I'll just kind 
to go down from the E string. E, B, and A strings. Not essential, but it's nice. So the second ending to the bridge riff he does is starts the same way. Starts with the arpeggio, the walk up. Now instead of going right to the A, he kind of just fills in with two extra notes in there. He just goes pointer finger on the D string, middle finger on the G string. So one more time, one, two, three. And then he goes to the A chord and fills in with three more little in-between notes. So if I play it in the rhythm, one, two, three, four. good way to get through that. So we'll go a lot deeper into how that whole riff works in the later lessons, but that's a pretty good way to get through it at this point. Now the only thing that's really left is how to end the song. Basically the song ends with a sort of vamp on the chorus, and then in a lot of live performances he does another one of the walk-ups at the end. So really the way I'd get through it for starters is just to go over the E minor and the A changes that he does on the chorus. You know, just whole lot of repeats of shower the people you love with love show them the way that you feel just repeat that again and na, 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 na. and improvise over it if you can it's always a fun thing to do and then as you get to being ready to do be done you kind of t um, use the a sharp diminished riff he had before. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. So you get to the B minor, and in the same place you kind of grabbed that outro, um, that outro from the uh, first chorus. You're gonna, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go B minor once. One, one, two, three. basic idea. It's very similar to the intro, it just starts a beat earlier. Well, really half a beat earlier. So it's going out of the B minor, does the arpeggio. One, two, three, pinch, pluck, pinch, pluck, pinch, pluck, pinch, pluck. And then he just, he just kind of plucks a D chord with the open E string and hammers onto the second fret. So the exact same way you kind of had the alternating finger in between before. Um, sometimes he uses the ring finger there to kind of get that note, but I t for this kind of simplified version, I'll tend to just follow up the scale in a simple way if I can. But when you get to the G chord, I usually pluck a bigger chord, if you can, just to kind of let it swell a bit, so you're kind of plucking. Pinch, pluck, pinch, pluck. Now here I'll kind of try to hit a couple extra notes and then the in-between the note, and then I'll try to pluck this whole at A and then the in-between note, and then there you go. So now let's try to play through the whole thing real quick.
need to say tonight is to shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna be much better if you only will. You can run, but you cannot hide. This is widely known And what you gonna do with your foolish pride When you're all by yourself alone Once you tell somebody the way that you feel You can feel it beginning to ease I guess it's true what they say about the squeaky wheel it's always getting the breeze It's better to shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be just fine if you only will What I'd like to do to you Well, there you have it. Uh, that's my simplified version of Shower the People. Again, in the next lesson, we're going to try to go into a lot more depth with a lot more of the kind of fancy licks that he does. And then in the third lesson, we're going to try to expand all this stuff even more and really try to get into the heart of what's going on with this finger picking. Um, this version you, is a kind of skeletal so that you can kind of mess around with it. It does feel a little bit empty at times. It's supposed to be that way so that you're kind of tempted to think, okay, what else might I do with this, you know? So that's okay to do. You know, the parts that don't feel like there's a lot going on, feel free to just see what your hands do because that's a lot of where the good stuff's gonna come from. So bear that in mind and uh, yeah, if you're hungry for more, just keep rolling with the series.